Hey loves, I'm back with another video. And today I want to talk about a topic that I haven't really touched on in depth. And that is about Egbe, Egbe Orun that is, your soul group. Um, I have many videos in my playlist about the soul's journey, about your soulmates and things like that, but I'm not even speaking romance, my dear. I'm speaking of the uh, conglomerate of souls that you incarnate with lifetime after lifetime and the souls that you hang out with in the heavens. If you believe in heaven, I'm not talking about it from a Christian or Islamic standpoint. I'm just talking about the spirit world. So a lot of people believe that October is only about the ancestors and autumn um, has the veil thinner for ghosts and ancestors and things like that. But one topic that a lot of people don't discuss is that egg bay tend to get closer to us around this time period as well. So if you don't understand what egg bay is, please check out my playlist called The Soul's Journey. I will leave it in the description box of this video and it will better help you, ex um, it will better kind of help explain what I'm talking about on this one. So I'll just kind of briefly give a crash explanation, a crash, a crash course explanation on what Egbe or Rune is. So Egbe only just means society. It is a Yoruba term and it is from the Isheshe tradition. And it talks about, once again, the group of souls who are non-romantic and romantic in your soul group from the heavens. Sometimes when you choose to reincarnate into a human body and a lifetime, all of your soulmates in the heavens are not going to reincarnate with you at the same time. They may stay back and skip a lifetime and catch you in the next one. And then on the flip side, there are times when your soul group members reincarnate to a realm. It doesn't just have to be earth and that's a whole deeper type of topic, but they reincarnate and you stay back. So you end up being the Egbe Orun. Orun, once again, means heaven. Egbe Aye are your soulmates that are alive in the flesh, in the human body, just like you. And they can be, once again, romantic and non-romantic. It can be uh, one of uh, your sister, your brother, your best friend from high school, um, one of your rivals who you ended up being friends with, a frenemy. Um, a lover, an ex, a child's, um, I hate that word, baby mama, baby daddy. Anyway, that type of thing. But someone that you have had lots of karmic connections with throughout lifetimes. Now, we're not going to get all into twin flames and all of that other type of stuff. We're just talking about the um, collective of your soul group. In a different video, I explained this kind of like a sunflower. You know, you have the center of the sunflower, the nucleus, and then you have the petals. So thinking of a molecule, which kind of reminds me of a sunflower, if you want to look at this from a scientific standpoint, or uh, beams of light, there's a nucleus that connects different petals. So if you can think of your soul group as, you know, the center of the sunflower and the petal are each of you in your soul group, the individuated souls connected to, you know, that one nucleus of the sunflower. So it's you and your other soul group members. By the way, might I add, I'm not only an initiate of Orisha, I'm also an initiate into Egbe. I'm known as Egbe Bimi, and I am an Ialode, which is a leader of Egbe in my particular soul group, which I'll explain a little more, you know, throughout this video. But I want to talk about why we appease Egbe. A lot of people tend to over-romanticize indigenous and African traditions. Oh, we over-romanticize the ancestors. We over-romanticize the Orishas. We put human beings on pedestals. We over-romanticize our soulmates and our soul group. We do not always appease Egg Bay because they are so benevolent and they're looking out for us. We appease them because those jokers can be quite mischievous. Please do not confuse your Egg Bay or room, your soul group, with your ancestors who are kind of like more grandmother, grandfather type energy, who are more who can, you know, they can be toxic too, but a little more mature wants, they want what's best for you. They want you to be, you know, happily married or whatever your destiny chooses. Um, then you have your spirit guides who they may not be your ancestors. They may not even be in your soul group, but they, they want what's best for you, your highest good. They're not trying to interrupt your life. Um, when ancestors and spirit guides interrupt our life, it's often to protect us from somebody that is abusing us, hurting us, or doesn't mean us well, or they're trying to get us out of an, um, a bad situation, which ends up being a blessing in disguise. With Egbe, 
um, they can interrupt the good things in your life if you don't give them their proper uh, attention because egg bay are not necessarily bad spirits, but sometimes they can be very immature. So if you think of the level of your soul's maturity, um, it's not that, they, once again, it's not that their intentions are bad. Just look at all the people who you've been friends with in this lifetime, from elementary school to high school. They may not be bad people, but some of them may be liars. Some of them may be envious of you. Some of them may be possessive of you. Um, some of them may have issues, you know, character flaw issues. So there's some element, there can be elements of immaturity. So if you look at the best friends that you have on earth um, and the people you've had relationships with, romantic and non-romantic, you know, they may be good people, but they have their flaws and immaturities. And I want you to look at egg bay as the same thing. Once again, we often appease our egg bay so that they do not interrupt our life. Um, there are egg bay or room members that are very benevolent and they, you know, they're not possessive of us. They want what's best for us. They want us to be happy during our incarnation on earth. But we have a few members that kind of want to interrupt things a little bit and we have to keep them appeased to a certain degree. In Ifa Isheshe tradition, uh, we tend to look at Egbe as more childlike spirits, but they're not necessarily children. But we kind of have to handle them with kid gloves because of the things that they can do. A lot of people attribute a lot of mischief around the home to the Orisha as Shui Legba, the trickster. You know, when keys and things come up missing. But Egbe can have the ability to do the same thing. Eshu doesn't always want to be blamed for the little um, mishaps that go on in your house and in your life. Um, it's not always a demonic attack or things like that. A lot of times things are related to your soul group. Your uh, best friends in the heavens that you cannot see, but they are around you, observing you. They're looking at your life, observing you, eating their popcorn, metaphorically speaking, like a reality TV show, watching you go through what you go through and watching you learn your lessons and watching your character flaws and your character um, and your coming of age maturity. And they can either help you get to where you're trying to go or they can uh, hold you back with what they think and what they feel. So once again, we appease egg bay oftentimes because they can cause issues. If you look at some children with behavioral issues, um, and this cannot scientifically be proven at this time, um, unless you're looking at quantum physics to a certain degree, but I personally believe in my gut and in my intuition that a lot of um, childhood uh, misbehavior can be attributed to egg bay. This isn't everything. There is nature and nurture. Nature is kind of like what they bring with them from the soul uh, from the soul realm, ancestral character flaws. And then nurture is maybe they aren't being raised correctly. Maybe they're being abused. Maybe they're not learning what they need to learn. But besides that, if everything else is lining up and there are still some issues going on, uh, it doesn't always have to be past life or anything like that. It can be egg bay interrupting them because children are closer to the spirit realm than we, I don't want to say that they're closer, but their realization of the spirit realm tends to be more intense than ours because once we are in, you know, once we, as, the more we grow up, we, be, we go more into our left brain, which is our rational mind. You know, we got to pay bills. We got to focus on getting our homework in on time, going to class, you know, work and all this other type of stuff. The worldly responsibilities where children don't have all that as much. So there's more time for egg bait to kind of come through and affect them in many type of ways. But once you become an adult, they can still do the same thing they, that they did as children, but you're less aware that it's egg bait doing it. Like when you see children talking about, they see um, an invisible best friend or an imaginary friend, oftentimes that is connected to egg bait. Um, untimely demise of people uh, that pass before their parents do can often be attributed to egg bait. Um, sometimes we make promises before we in, before we incarnate into our current lives to only be here for a certain period of time and to go back. Um, sometimes we make promises to our egg bay before we incarnate here to this realm. And if we break those promises, then uh, there can be some mischief going on with egg bay. The concept of having a spirit wife or a spirit husband interrupt your love life to where you can't keep a romantic relationship that can be attributed to egg bay because that spiritual partner if you have a i hate using those old corny twin flame soulmate 
But if you have a spiritual mate in the spirit realm who you are connected to throughout eternity that did not incarnate with you in your lifetime, um, they can often get jealous and possessive of you and cause interruptions if you are uh, attempting to have a relationship down here in the third dimension. They may not be able to take it to see you hugged up on somebody else and, and they, they can cause problems. And you're wondering, like, what am I doing wrong? Uh, I thought I'm, you know, doing all my things to be a virtue and, you know, certain things don't work out. So sometimes that is con that is attributed to Egg Bay if you can't get along with your mate or... um. You make friends with people, you know, of the same sex, platonic friendships, and those friendships don't work out. You could have a jealous best friend in the spirit realm, your egg bay group. If you're having trouble finding a best friend to stick to, it may be because they're already over there watching and kind of controlling things like a puppet from behind the scenes. So it's just certain things to keep in mind. I'm not saying it's always the case, but these are things that you may want to factor in before you think somebody is throwing witchcraft on you or if an ancestor is punishing you. It's not always the case like that. Don't forget to factor in Egg Bay. Um, I have my notes here with me. So Egg Bay can be mischievous. Um, they can be jealous. They can be envious of you. It, you look like you're leveling up down here and it feels like you're kind of leaving it behind a little bit. They may, they may, they might feel some type of way about that. Um, they can miss you. They might miss you being out of a human body and with them in the spirit realm to a certain degree, even though they're with you. But the fact that they can see you, hear you and perceive you, but you can't see, hear, perceive them, that can bother them and irritate them to a certain degree. If they're trying to get your attention and you don't know it's them or you don't remember who they are, what their name is or what, how important they are to you, that can make them feel some type of way, believe it or not. Uh, so once again, they can have elements and aspects of their personality that are yet to evolve and be mature. Does not mean that they're evil, just means that they have a lot of growing up to do, just like the people in our lives. Um, once again, they can also be possessive, and you will find this in um, people who are suffering from a spirit spouse, a spirit wife, spirit husband, or it feels like someone's having sex with them in their dreams. If you're experiencing any of, the, any of those type of things, you may want to check into if you have an egg bay or rune spouse that is following you what we call it is okor room for the most part it's for the woman the spirit husband so if you have any if you've had any instances in your life where uh the lights are turning on and off for no reason it's not always ancestors or ghosts that can um that can be sometimes attributed to your soul group to your egg bay when they're trying to get your attention they don't just do this all the time um, just for capricious reasons. It's when they're trying to get your attention or remind you of something when you're at a point in your life where you made a promise to them and it's time to keep that promise. They can often do things to try to, you hoo I'm here. I know you can't see me or hear me. So they have to do other extreme measures to get your attention. It often takes more than one of them to put their energy together to be able to move objects in a house or turn lights on and off. So just keeping those things in mind, that's when they are really trying to get your attention of something important. And you may want to keep that in mind, even if they're acting immature, just like when your children act up, if they feel like you're not paying them attention, the soul group can do the same thing. So you want to handle them with kid gloves and respect. You don't want to uh, get mad and, and, uh, well, you better stop and I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and all this other kind of, you want to kind of figure out what's going on first and what their intention is for causing the interruption before going off. Because if you're going off and they're going off and you're both acting immature, then you are making yourself more susceptible to where they can manipulate you because you're getting down on their level. You know how they say if somebody's trying to tear you down, you have to rise above them. You have to raise your vibration so that they can't get to you. So you have to kind of take the reins and be the more mature one if they are having an immature moment with you. And just first of all, you need to figure out through divination, you need to have someone do a divination for you or a yes or no and figure out if it's egg bay that's causing the interruption. And if it is and you sense some things in your home, I'll give you a few symptoms in these notes. Then remember, like, take a breath, woosa, and figure out what is it that they're trying to tell me. Just like when our children act up or they're crying, instead of just going, what's wrong with you? I don't know what you want. Take a time, woosa, and figure out what is this being trying to relate to me? What is this being trying to communicate to me? There's obviously something I need to pay attention to and I need to tend to. So let me figure this out first before I go off because I'm tired of these lights going on and off. You know, if you know what I mean. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, another sign that you are a strong egg bay, which is a child of egg bay or a person of egg bay. We all have egg bay, by the way, is you might be flying in your dreams. 
and you can't fly, of course. Um, you might find yourself swimming in your dreams and swimming really fast, but you might not be able to even swim in real life. Or you might find yourself running really fast and you're not an athlete or you're not into running. And you find yourself doing athletic feats or physical feats that you are not um, as capable of doing in the earth realm. Um, also flying with other people, flying real high and It'll feel real almost because you're astral traveling. You're going, you're astral traveling in the spirit realm, going to visit your egg bay. I also spoke in another one of my videos that the human body needs rest. Our soul doesn't need rest. So when we go to sleep at night, our soul, you know, it's not, it's not going to just be bored laying in our sleep in human bodies. We have the astral core connected to our Ori'i Nu, which is at the navel area. And we astral travel or we go to the dream world. So that's our soul traveling. So when we see different things, people or beings, or we're doing things, we are really experiencing that on a spiritual level beyond the third dimension. Because once again, the body needs sleep. Our soul does not need sleep. So we just kind of, we're all over the cosmos having our own little journey outside of the human body. And what brings us back to that human body, say, for instance, if you have to get up and use the restroom or, you know, someone is, you know, tapping you, telling you to wake up is that astral core. So the soul knows to go back. Not that the soul is not in the body, but the soul knows to fully come back and incorporate into the body um, out of the deeper uh, waves of sleep once you... Um, once you wake up, you're fully incorporated, and that's that astral cord that does that. If that astral cord is severed, then the person passes away in their sleep. I hope I'm not being unclear with what I am saying. So the reason why you can astral travel and still pick up on things going on with your human body or you know how to jump up out of your sleep is because of that cord. It, it allows you to still be connected to it. It's kind of like going uh, deep sea diving and you have diving gear at the top, but you're going all the way to the bottom. So that diving gear is kind of like what your astral core does and allows you, um, you know, the equipment allows you to still breathe underwater and things like that. So think of it in that type of way because you are deep diving into the realm of your subconscious and superconscious mind when you are sleeping. Um... Another thing I wanted to say too is sometimes when you are, um, if you wake up and your heart is racing really fast, like you've been running or fighting in your sleep or you get up and you're like, ah, ah, that's because you were doing that in the spirit realm. Your astral body was either having a fight with somebody, having an argument or was struggling in some type of way. It's not always that they say the hag is riding your back. If you are laying down and you can't get up, sometimes it's your astral body going back into your human body after you astral travel. And uh, sometimes you wake up too fast before the uh, spirit is fully in there. And it's like, oh, I can't get up. I can't get up. So you kind of feel stuck a little bit. So that's another thing that I wanted to explain to you that I hope I didn't forget. Um, another thing is um, getting back to egg bay besides just sleep is when you if you've ever been in a house and you've heard like a baby crying but you look over and you have a baby or a child and the baby sound asleep not making any noise and you're like who is that or you hear the sound of a child laughing or you sound like somebody running through the house or pitter patter of feet and nobody is there but you or you hear animal noises and things like that that can often be egg based sometimes uh kind of pranking you a little bit with certain sounds um, the one big thing that you want to be careful of is if you hear somebody calling your name and no one is there. Um, there's some sayings about that in both, you know, Orisha, Isheshe tradition and the old hoodoo traditions. We say you're not supposed to answer if they're calling your name. Um, getting back to some of the symptoms of egg bay is unexpected breakups you had a good relationship everything was going well and all of a sudden the person just woke up or you woke up you didn't want the person no more um oftentimes when you astral travel or you sleep or you wake up you you know you all good with your mate you wake up in the morning and all of a sudden you're looking at this person like well who the heck are you i don't even like you sometimes it's because you went to the spirit realm and you got the tea from your egg bay and you're looking at this person like oh you know a totally different outlook say for instance you go to bed at 10 o'clock at night you wake up at uh, at 8 a.m. in the morning and your outlook is different oftentimes because your ori or, or your higher self your soul has traveled to the spirit realm connected with your soul group had a little conjugal visit with your spirit world members and they've told you some things or they've observed some things and now you're awake and now you're looking at this person or this situation totally different that's why when people say i need to sleep on it um oftentimes because when you're astral traveling you can either encounter an ancestor 
um, your higher self or your egg bay members, and they're giving you information to bring back with you to uh, the illusion of the third dimension when you wake up. So you have a different perspective, and you're like, well, why do I? Why have I changed my mind all of a sudden? Why do I? Why am I not mad anymore? Why do I have a different perspective? That's because your soul has had a chance to travel and refresh throughout the night and get some more spiritual insight. Because once again, you're not just sleeping; you are continuing your soul's journey um, while connected to that astral cord with your body, if you understand what I mean. Next thing is, um, did I mention unexpected breakups of friendships? Maybe you were cool with somebody, y'all were going out to eat, sharing each other's clothes, and all of a sudden this person just don't want to fool with you anymore, or you just don't want to fool with them, and you're like, well, what the heck happened? I don't know. What did I do wrong? You're trying to figure out what you did wrong. Sometimes that can be egg bait interrupting your friendships, especially if they're possessive of you and they don't want to see you get too close to somebody. Maybe it's a karmic that's not necessarily in your soul group and they don't want to see you get too close to that person or maybe they feel like that person may have wrong, the wrong motives for you. Egg bait can interrupt and do things like that when they're in their immature mode. Um, if you go to sleep and you dream and you uh, dream of seeing people from elementary school that you used to know, you haven't seen them in years, or you see people from high school, or you see an old best friend, old homegirl, old homeboy, ex-lover, this or that, oftentimes, or somebody you ain't even thought about in a long time, that's often an egg bait thing. Oftentimes when you see those people you haven't seen in a long time, they're probably in your soul group or they're probably adjacent to your soul group. So there's a reason why you are seeing them. It's a karmic reason why you are encountering them in the dream world also um when you go to sleep at night and you dream or you astral travel and you go back to the same doggone place like say for instance you can almost if you close your eyes you can say okay it's a mountain in the right hand corner on the west side of this setting and it's a it's a river it's a blue river and it's that same it's the same patch of sunflowers if you can describe to the t what you see in that dream, whether you're at the beach side, whether you're under banana tree, um, whether you are at the same house, whatever it is, if when you close your eyes and go to sleep, you consistently go back to that same place, that's often a real thing that you are doing. That's egg bait, that you're traveling, you're going back to where, uh, to the kind of border between the third dimension and the spirit world where you are meeting with your egg bait, your soul group, and uh, you're doing this for a reason. That's where your soul wants to go during that particular time period. Um, so keeping those things in mind, once again, settings, the same place, the same woods, the same house, the same park, the same school. Maybe you are meeting them at your old high school or you're meeting them at the same building. That is often a egg bay related dream. Um, going back to the same place time and time again, and even before you fall asleep, you can start to kind of sense like that place you can forget it throughout the day in your conscious mind but when you start to kind of go into your different states of consciousness right before you fall off into sleep you know they're alpha delta theta waves of sleep etc you can kind of start remembering that place and when you wake up you may go i know i was somewhere i don't know what i was doing i was having a damn good time but i don't remember who i was having a good time with i don't remember what i was talking about but all i know is i had a good time that is often the egg bay dream or um you dance and you having the time of your life and you wake up and you got a song on your mind you never heard that song in your life and you just groove you wake up and you're in a good mood and you just you're thinking about that song you want to put some music on that's often you jamming with your egg bay with your soul group um if you wake up mad you ready to fight somebody you went to bed fine now you all angry and triggered and stuff you probably have an argument with your egg bay when you went to sleep that previous night so keep those things in mind um let's see if you find yourself talking to people you never met before but they don't feel that they don't feel like strangers but you don't recognize them you don't know their name or I don't recognize seeing you. I don't remember seeing you before, but you're just sitting there talking to them. You ever saw the movie Forrest Gump where he's sitting there just on that bench having a conversation with people? It's like that type of thing in your dream. You're just having the biggest conversation of your life. Sometimes, not all the time, because it can be a karmic meeting. Sometimes that can be egg bay, especially if you see that person, if you see that being again in your dreams, like a couple of times, but you don't know the name or who they are, that can be egg bay. Um, 
especially if they're not giving you advice, if y'all just having a regular conversation, like y'all are homies and peers, that's often egg bait. But if they're coming to you and they're giving you this wisdom, sage advice, that could either be an ancestor or a spirit guide. So there is a difference. Now keep in mind, some of your egg bait can be your spirit guides and some of your ancestors can be in your egg bait, but not all egg bear ancestors and not all egg bear spirit guides. And I hope I'm not confusing you. Egg bait is usually your peer group in the spirit realm our spirit guides are usually in a different soul group besides ours but that are adjacent that kind of teaches our soul group and they often tend to be a little more mature than our soul group so that's why they're able to help us because they're elevating a little higher than us it's kind of like having um you know in high school how you have tutors and mentors like say for instance if you're a freshman in high school and you have like the seniors that are helping you kind of get through your freshman year of high school or whatever that's how kind of like your spirit guides are or maybe they're college to the mentors, this is just a hypothetical example, but our spirit guides tend to be a little more elevated than our particular soul group. So that's why they're able to come and volunteer and help us because they also elevate by helping us, by doing good for the less mature soul groups, if you know what I mean. But if it seems like you're talking to a being, they're not really offering you some wisdom. Maybe they're giving you the tea, but they're not really giving you this esoteric wisdom and maturity. That's often egg bait, my dear, <laughs> for the most part. Or, um, yeah, well, it's like ancestors that tend to give us advice. They tend to kind of wag their finger at us in the dreams. Um, spirit guides, they tend to not really admonish us as much. They can. It just depends on how close we are to them. But they tend to be kind of more sage-like. And then egg bay, they just tend to kind of, what are you doing? You trust this person? It, it tends to be more like on our level of maturity, if you know what I mean. Um, let's see. Yeah, I already said talking to people you've never met before in this life or having a friend that you've never seen before in this life. And they're, you've never seen this person. You've never met this person in the third dimension. Um, once again, dreams of being out of school. Um, situations where you find yourself holding a baby and maybe you don't have a baby. Or um, seeing children and you've never seen these children before in your life. Especially if you are a woman or you're a man even, that has had a woman terminate a pregnancy, that can be what is called a causa spirit, um, which can be connected to you that still needs elevation because it didn't get a chance to be born. Um, if that opportunity was taken from them, you may see that, uh, that child spirit in the spirit realm. Um, you may find yourself holding that baby. If you find yourself holding babies and then you have fertility issues, that's often um, a sign of egg bay of kind of like saying, well, you don't want me to be born, so I'm going to limit you from doing this for a time period. That can be a case too, not always with everybody, but I want you to keep that in mind. If you find yourself holding children or playing with children that you haven't met before and also seeing the same baby over and over again and throughout the years, you keep having these recurring dreams about the baby and the baby's getting older and older. Like maybe at first it was a newborn and then it ended up being like four years old, four years later and it ends up being like eight years old and it's just getting older and older. That's, uh, that's probably your own child, your own spirit child. Maybe you had a... Um, a chemical pregnancy or once again the pregnancy didn't go to full term but that child is still trying to make a connection to you in the earth realm that's often an egg based sort of uh, encounter um let's see dreams by the banana tree dreams by the beach dreams by the shore um if you find your and then also egg bay activity in your home is like if objects come up missing like for me recently i had a computer cord and I always put this computer, this laptop, and its cord in the same place all the time. So I woke up one morning, and you know how you have the, the adapter part where it connects the cord? That part was gone. I'm like, wait a minute. The base of it's here. I hope you understand what I mean. And the other part's gone. What And can't find it anywhere. Nobody moved it. Nobody touches it because nobody goes in my closet and uh, divined on it. It was egg bay because, who Lord, they've been acting a fool lately if you know what i mean so yes they can make things go missing um or you feel like something drops all the time or you eating some food and it drops on the floor sometimes ancestors and, and legba can do that too but if you eating something you holding it with a firm grip and all of a sudden it's on the floor you bump into something not all the time it's going to be spiritual but if it's just out of the blue and it happens often that can be egg bay pranking you um especially with the missing objects and things coming up. You're like, I know I put that right there. I know I did this. I know I did that. That can be egg-based. So you want to be really careful with things like that. 
with memory lapses and things like that, walking in your uh, sleep. Uh, that can often be encouraged by egg bay if that's something that you do. Um, let's see. People, when you if you ever go to a nursing home or you have a grandparent or older family member and then you start seeing them talking to themselves and or they get the Alzheimer's or dementia and they start talking to people that's not there, often they're talking to the egg bay because it is believed when people have Alzheimer's and dementia, it's kind of spiritually assume that they're ready to cross over back into ancestorhood but they're giving the family time to accept it so they're slowly drifting away um mentally and spiritually but they're still in their body so they're losing their third dimensional memories and they're gaining their fourth and fifth dimensional memories or spirit world memories and often of uh, you'll see them they may be talking, hey, yeah, I see old Lily standing at the edge of my bed. It may be close to them, close to them getting ready to pass over. That can either be ancestors they're looking at, their parents, if their parents crossed over, or they can be talking to the egg bay at the foot of the bed. Um, so keeping those particular things in mind. Objects coming up missing, older family members talking to people that aren't there, um, children with imaginary friends and things such as that. Um, also, if you are, have you ever been like sleepy, maybe you dozing off on the couch and you in between a dream and in between awake, you're not quite there. You know how you kind of like your head's nodding and you're in between there and you hear some laughing. If you're able to do that, I'm not seeing anybody's clear audience. Um, sometimes we're clear audience. Sometimes we aren't, but if you hear something like <laughs> or somebody laughing or giggling and nobody is home with you, nobody's in the room, the TV's off, the computer's off, that's egg bait. <laughs> I get nine times out of ten that's egg bait pranking you. You know, like say for instance, when children, when some when one of them falls asleep, they put the toothpaste on each other and prank, egg bay can do the same thing. They're messing with you while you asleep. They're not trying to scare you or haunt you. They're just they're just picking at you for fun. They're just poking at you. Or if you feel like somebody's tickling your feet in your sleep, I really I have I've had that experience too. I mean, it sounds like a whole bunch of them running around the room like bad, not bad, like uh mischievous children playing. That's an egg bay thing as well, especially if it's between, I would say, 2 a.m., really 3 a.m., and 5 a.m. in the morning. But really, between 2 and 3, 4 a.m., that's a strong period for egg bay activity in your house. Um, that's when my computer cord came up missing, too, because I got up in the middle of the night of uh, too much information to get to the restroom. I'm like, wait a minute, where's my laptop cord? I know at 10 o'clock I laid this cord right here. That's, that's another reason why I knew, besides divination, it was egg bay. Um, once again, sexual dreams, getting, getting all into it and you having a good time and this and that, that's often an egg bay situation. Sometimes it's not always egg bay. It can be, I want to say the word demonic. So you have to, you know, be careful with that. You don't want to complete the act or, you know, have the final big finish with that particular thing because it can cause a loss of your energy to a certain degree. It can be a psychic energy vampire, like an incubus, succubus type of spirit. Um, seductive dreams can be egg bay as well, which can cause losses. So you want to be careful with those particular things. So in general, I hope you understand what I mean. I have to do a different type of video about egg bay to I come on live and you all are able to talk back and forth with me and interface. But these are some of the things I want you all to keep in mind um, about why we appease egg bay so that they don't cause problems in our life, so that they don't cause untimely death. It is believed that if a person that a person may have to make a bow, which we call nifa, if they're getting ready to get married or buy a house, because sometimes it's believed that that person can pass away as soon as they get married or as soon as they buy a house, um, because maybe they agree with their egg bay that after they complete this house and it's time for them to go back to the spirit realm. Maybe they agreed to this and forgot they agreed to it. So these are some of the things to keep in mind. Egg bay can cause all type of issues of in our lifetimes and interruptions so we want them to help us and accept our incarnation and not hinder us because if we're hindered on our path or we're delayed on our path then that's more karmic buildup you may have to reincarnate and do certain things again and we don't want that because that defeats the purpose of us coming here so it's very important to try to appease your egg bay if you are able to but once again if you don't know anything about egg bay and soul group then have a divination done and see what they require of you and see what needs to be done. But common things we use to appease egg bay are sugar cane, um, snacks that you would give children like, you know, little Debbie snack cakes, cupcakes, cookies, popcorn, small bananas, not the big bananas necessarily, but the little small bananas. Um, we sing them nursery rhyme songs. We sing them egg bay songs. Once again, I am an initiate of egg bay, so I do understand what is done. 
Another thing is, too, you need to figure out what egg bay you belong to. You can belong to more than one egg bay. I am an Ialode and Ilerico egg bay. So keeping those things in mind, there are many, many, many egg bay and classes of egg bay. There's Jangun, there's Ajishafe, there is um, Ialaje. There are many, many, many egg bay. It, but Ialode is the mother and the leader of egg bay. And I'm about to do a video about Ialode. If you're having problems um, with your romantic relationships and love life, that's a, that can be an Ialode thing, but it can be a very good thing though. It's, it's a blessing in disguise. So anyway, I won't make this video too long. This video is only about why we appease egg bay and why it's so important to appease your soul group. Keep in mind, you do not have to practice ifal, isheshe, or orisha tradition to uh, honor egg bay. Um, because we all have egg bay. We all have a soul. We all have ancestors and we all have a soul group. So therefore, uh, you could be Hindu, Buddhist, Muslim living somewhere in the Himalayas. You have an egg bay. So that's not like this. It's not a question worth asking. Like, do I have an egg bay? Yes. If you have a soul, if you're here on earth, you, my dear, have an egg bay. You belong to a soul group. If you're a loner, you have an egg bay. If you are a hermit, you have an egg bay. Everybody has a soul group. Remember, the, the third dimensional realm is only an illusion. So anyway, I'll do my best to do more, more videos about this. I'll try to check the comments section this weekend. Remember, I'm ha I have the 44 flash sale for my seduction magic workshop of... The first three of my tarot classes, Major Arcana, Minor Arcana, and uh, the Introduction to Tarot, and also the Facial Reading, Facial Fortune Telling Workshop. All of those are on sale for $44 for the next 24 hours, so catch those while those sales are going on. And also, my book, Ori, Finding Your Purpose and Improving Your Life Working with Your Oversoul, is now available in print on Amazon, so you can check that out. And I look forward to speaking with you all soon. I look forward to your questions on this topic. I do want to do a live where we talk about this one-on-one because -on -one I love this topic. Okay? All right. Peace and bliss. Talk to you soon. Bye.